Hi everybody, my name is Elena and I'm going to read to you a very nice story called The Bad-Tempered Ladybird by Eric Carr. It's a very, very nice story um, that Eric Carr, who sadly passed away this year, wrote um, for children and for grown-ups because I think that the story talks about how much better life is when one is not so grumpy when one can work together with others, collaborate with others. And it's a very funky description of space and time, as you will see. So this is what it looks like. This is the cover of the book. And I'm going to be showing you every page so that you can follow the story with me. So this is The Bad Tempered Lady Bird by Eric Carl. It was night, and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybird flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a bad-tempered ladybird flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said the friendly ladybird. Go away, shouted the bad-tempered ladybird. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybird. No, they're mine, all mine, screamed the bad-tempered ladybird. Or do you want to fight with me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybird sweetly. It looked the other ladybird straight in the eye. The bad-tempered ladybird stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the bad-tempered ladybird. I'll show you puffed itself up and flew off. At six o'clock, I met a wasp. Hey you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the wasp, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At seven o'clock, it saw a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At ten o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At eleven o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At twelve noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, Want to fight? 
If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? If you insist said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not big enough, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the bad-tempered ladybird, want to fight? But the whale didn't answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the bad-tempered ladybird and flew off. At 5.15, the bad-tempered ladybird said to one of the whale's flippers, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the bad-tempered ladybird said to the whale's fin, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer. So it flew on. At a quarter to six, the bad-tempered ladybird said to the whale's tail, Hey, you, want to fight? And the whale's tail gave the bad-tempered ladybird such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the bad-tempered ladybird arrived right back where it had started from. Ah, there you are again, said the friendly ladybird. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. We can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired and hungry ladybird. Soon? All the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You're welcome, answered both the ladybirds, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the story of the bad-tempered ladybird, a very nice metaphor about how life is so much better when we're not grumpy and how the path and the way to realizing that can be longer than, than we need it and than it should be. But eventually we'll all get there, we'll be friendly ladybirds and get along with everybody that we live on the same leaf with. If you liked the story, if you liked the video, please don't hesitate to like, to comment, to share and to subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Bye.